Yeah, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, everyone. So today I would like to thank uh, CTBUH to give us uh, to give uh, Shanghai Tower this opportunity to give you this uh, presentation. So it is also our hope that yeah, actually over the six years uh, of uh, preparation and planning and construction, we would like to take this opportunity to share with you our experience. So because of the global urbanization and economic uh, growth uh, for the super high um, buildings, uh, I think uh, for those um, places uh, with uh, uh, scarce uh, land resources and high population and also high frequency of economic activity, it is unavoidable to have uh, super high buildings. Well, in the future, so how can we build these uh, super high rises? So this is a topic we need to rethink about that. Well, for Shanghai Tower, six years ago, yeah, we started to make the planning for this uh, Shanghai Tower. Actually, as mentioned by Vice Mayor and also our Chairman, so actually we really didn't uh, um, only pursue the height of the high rises because uh, depending on our existing technology, yeah, of course uh, we can have an even taller building. However, we didn't uh, really pursue the taller buildings. For us, uh, the priority is given to the humanity because we want to have uh, better functionalities uh, in order to have a more harmonious and sustainable growth model. So today I would like to share with you our experience with the Shanghai Tower in five dimensions. Because over the past years, uh, we have made a lot of explorations. So I would also like to share with you what are our um, pursuits. So on the slide, you can find that so we have uh, five dimensions uh, for our thoughts. So this will be our future direction. So first, uh, in terms of the architectural concept, uh, that is uh, the harmonious community. Then is uh, the function, that is our vertical community. Then in terms of the quality, it is about the green community. And fourthly, for the architectural information, we are going to build uh, a smart community. And finally, it is about our cultural community. Well, first of all, in terms of architectural form, yeah, we believe that in the future, yeah, we should pay more attention yeah, to the interrelationship between the architecture, building, and the society. So in this regard, so we think about the area, city, and architecture. So they are three in one concept. Well, in terms of uh, urban perspective, at the very beginning, yeah, while we uh, think about this uh, Shanghai Tower project, so of course uh, uh, the first topic is about the height, and also for the preliminary area of uh, Shanghai Tower, we already have uh, the Shanghai Financial Center and uh, Jingmao Tower. So at that time. So actually, we believe uh, that uh, yeah, we need to take a holistic perspective, uh, combining the other two super high um, buildings. So in the end, uh, so we can see that actually yeah, the uh, Shanghai Financial Center is uh, 70 meters higher than the Jingmao, and we hope that uh, the Shanghai Tower is 140 meters higher than the Shanghai Financial Center. So at that time, we have received uh, 19 and design programs. And uh, finally, we have uh, chosen a uh, gasola. So we have uh, chosen this uh, spiral architectural form. So at that time, yeah, why we choose this shape? Because we hope that uh, this shape can be compatible with the, the other two high rises. And uh, then in the regional perspective, so we hope uh, that uh, the project of uh, Shanghai Tower yeah, can help us uh, to make a better facilities for our transportation. You know that uh, the density of building and density of population is pretty high, and also the traffic volume is also pretty high in this area. So at the very beginning, so we pay more attention to the planning of the underground uh, transportation. 
And uh, thanks uh, to the underground transportation network. So now we have uh, four buildings are interconnected with each other. But in the future, we believe that more buildings uh, can be interconnected by our underground network. So we would like to release our ground transportation pressures. And then you know, we would like to add uh, more characteristics uh, to the buildings uh, by means of science and technologies uh, and uh, humanity, especially for our Shanghai Tower. So you can see that it is uh, rising and in a spiral way. Well, in addition to the beauty of uh, its architectural form, we also have uh, optimized its structures. For example, we use uh, the wind tunnel. So actually, the spiral by 120 degrees, and actually we can um, reduce uh, the wind pressure by 24%. Um, and in this way, the energy conservation can be better realized. So second is about our vertical community. Yeah, because uh, conventionally, yeah, we only have a very single functionality. Now we would like to have a vertical and uh, also multifunctional community. Yeah, through this uh, vertical community, its functionalities uh, can be more diversified, and we can also have a better life there and uh, more uh, comfortable space and also safer places. So we have uh, made improvement uh, on the functionalities and the zoning in this area. So for the entire building, it has been divided into eight zones. Yeah, we have uh, the um, public um, car park, and uh, we also have the conference uh, hotel and office, and uh, at the top it is observation level. So you can see that it can be divided into different zones through such uh, zoning. So we can effectively arrange uh, the transportation and also supporting facilities. And uh, then, so actually, this is about the separately zoned transportation and mechanical areas. Yeah, because uh, for the Shanghai Tower, the vertical transportation is one of our characteristics. Yeah, because uh, from um, ground, uh, the first and the second level, and uh, we have the internal uh, vertical elevators. So by doing so, especially during the peak hours, so we can uh, help you know, release uh, the pressures uh, of uh, populations uh, in this area. And also by means of this uh, vertical transportation, so even in the special cases, so we can try to divert uh, the population and also the flow of uh, population in a very fast way. And we have also taken into consideration the connection to public transport. So by means of underground uh, construction, so it can be connected with the two metro lines in Shanghai at the same time. Yeah, we also have the connections with the other public transportation facilities. In addition, so we also have the plazas inside the Shanghai Tower. Yeah, because this is also one of the special designs. Yeah, because for many buildings, so in addition to the functional pay, uh, spaces, so actually a lot of uh, um, buildings are lack of uh, the places for public communications. So in Shanghai Tower, so we have uh, set up uh, some um, plazas uh, just uh, like uh, in all the streets inside our tower. For example, we have uh, eight areas in our tower. And we have uh, uh, three uh, sky lobbies. In total, there are 24 sky lobbies in the tower. So of course, it can play a role of uh, public transportation intersection. And also for different areas, uh, different groups of people can choose uh, these uh, sky um, lobbies uh, for dialogues and communications. Uh, and we also have uh, the shops. Uh, we have uh, offices and also have a hotel. So there are also independent lobbies uh, for these offices and hotels and uh, in the underground. And uh, we also have uh, some other green areas uh, to be connected with each other. It is uh, just uh, like the public uh, plazas. 
So we hope uh, that uh, different types of people uh, can have uh, used these kind of green areas and public plazas uh, for communications and other activities. And we also have three-dimensional green areas. And uh, we also you know, we have uh, more than 570,000 uh, square meters. And we have more than 100 uh, stories, and we have uh, around uh, five uh, underground uh, stories. So in this uh, complex building, and uh, we have uh, set up uh, different uh, functionalities. Uh, yeah, because uh, it is our hope that it can become a real community. It is not uh, just an office building. It is not uh, just a hotel for a hotel or conferences. We hope that it can be built into a community. And uh, thirdly, we have also given um, priority to the green community. Six years ago, during the process of um, preparation, so according to our project vision, yeah, we hope that uh, the future change will be yeah, greener, more environmental, and uh, also more energy conservation. So at that time, yeah, we have uh, set up our principle to become a green environmental and uh, energy saving. To be more specific, uh, we try to follow the standards uh, by the U.S. LEED gold standard and also the Chinese architectural standard of uh, level three. Our chairman has also mentioned uh, just now that two years ago, yeah, we have uh, been granted yeah, the certificate of LEED gold. And also last week, we have also been certified as the Level 3 architecture by the China Association of Buildings. So it is believed that through these two certificates, we have in total employed 43 energy conservation technologies for this building. For example, so we try to conserve our land resources. So you know that uh, it covers an area of uh, 30,000 square meters, and uh, in terms of the floor area, it covers uh, more than 570,000, and the plot ratio is uh, 4. It can occupy yeah, less uh, um, n 9 um, hectares. So in such a highly populated uh, um, city with uh, very scarce land so resources, I think this is a very important initiative. In a second, in terms of water resources and non-conventional energy utilization, we adopt uh, gray water and uh, rainwater harvest and uh, recycling techniques. And the annual recycling volume of gray water is around 235,000 cubic meters and 20,000 rainwater harvest each year. So in terms of the utilization of the non-conventional water source, it amounts to 25% of the total water we use. In the meantime, we also adopt uh, water resources conservation equipment, and uh, we do uh, electricity generation by wind power. And in respect to energy conservation, we design a double facade with a shading system and tomorrow afternoon, we will make arrangements for a tour to visit the site of the Shanghai Tower. Up to now, the exterior curtain wall of a six to seven stories already starts to be constructed. So we used a double skin facade with a shading system. And in the atrium, we also set up the kind of uh, heat insulation and a sound insulation and energy conservation devices. So according to the Green 3 Star criteria in China, the total energy saving rate is around 54.3%. According to LEED standard, the level is 24.8% of energy saving. In the material utilization, we use a lot of uh, high strength uh, concrete. In terms of the distance of doing procurement of the raw material, and I would like to say, that I would like to say 70% of the materials were acquired within 800 kilometers of the vicinity. And in terms of the indoor environment, you know, we try to utilize natural lighting as much as we can. Air quality wise, we also adopt uh, those environment condition monitoring system in operations and the management, 
We're trying to do some studies on the feasibility to adopt the CPMS, the centralized planning and the management of the energy consumption, so that we can optimize the energy consumption pattern. And then green construction. All right. So I already shared with you a lot of information on green buildings. All right. I still have like 10 minutes to go. So firstly, I will share with you from the perspective of a smart community some of the important information. As information technology continues to develop with the concept of intelligent city, which was continuously being raised, building construction and management in the future will require an advanced information technology to deliver an unprecedented high-quality service, greater efficiency, less resource consumption, and a sustainable lifestyle. So when it comes to Shanghai Tower, we mainly do implementation from the following aspects. First, the development of the information network, an infrastructure construction based on networking, optic fiber, ICT, and RFID technology. So some of the projects are underway. So the vast amounts of information are processed, filtered, and integrated with intelligence, which builds a basic foundation for the wise community or intelligent community. In a second, we also adopt the BIM, or Building Information Modeling Technology. I'm sure you're all familiar with this technology, and this is an emerging technology in modern management in the engineering field. So Shanghai Tower applies the use of a BIM even on the early stage of the construction. Applying BIM into building design construction, procurement, property management, billing, measuring, etc. So it is adopted throughout the entire life cycle of the buildings. Due to the application of a BIM, we are enabled to do some good work on this very complicated super tall building, and you know, we can conduct design and construction in a very orderly, in a very well-organized fashion. So now we are using BIM technology on this project, and uh, in the next three days, we are going to have a specialized session to introduce the details of a BIM utilization to you. Third, health monitoring of the building. This is a program that is underway with the project. Via the health monitoring techniques, we are able to know that, for example, under different conditions, for example, settlement, the structure and the curtain wall changes that can be managed under the effects of earthquakes, wind pressure, and the temperature changes. Firstly, information technology based on a logistics network in a cloud computing center. So we are now trying to deploy those kind of uh, cloud computing center combined with a high-speed broadband network. So with this kind of a support, we will succeed in the construction of a totally intelligent community. And uh, based on all those infrastructure of telecommunications and the communications techniques, the internet, the IoT, and also mobile communications network. So we integrate the three types of networks, and we also build three platforms, internet kind of a platform, internet platform, and a mobile platform. And then we also have the integration of the three screens, the mobile screen, the tablet screen, and a PC screen. And as a result, we can produce a very good portal to output information. Then we can continuously provide different types of you know, easy-to-use information services to those people living in Shanghai. So that was about the introduction of the IT technology. And finally, we can look at uh, cultural dimension. So from the cultural point of view, how we are supposed to build this urban complex, it is fair to say Shanghai Tower as a building is not only a architectural kind of a landmark. For us, we even want to turn it into a cultural landmark, a place where people can uh, enjoy cultural ideas in a due cultural exchange. So
So the users of this tower will have a sense of uh, proudness in achievement and belonging. So from our perspective, and uh, we look a lot at the dimension of culture, and we hope that from the angle of a culture, how we are able to meet the needs of the users. First, the spatial culture, which I'm sure you're familiar with. For example, the shape, the form of the building, public spatial arts, and a gardening art, etc. And from these different kind of angles, we hope that we can bring to full play the cultural feeling that the construction can deliver. And regarding the shame, shape and the form of the building, as I already mentioned, this building has a very kind of a streamlined design in the exterior shape. This is well in line with the features of Shanghai being the capital city of a fashion in this country. In the meantime, I also mentioned we have like 24 sky lobbies. So all those sky lobbies provide us with very beautiful and a very nice spatial cultures indeed. And of course, we also include some imagery related cultural works and a functional cultural works. And some of the programs are well underway. We have already been working with a very famous museum in China. We already signed a cooperative agreement with the museum. And on the 37th floor of the building, and we're going to make arrangement for a small style, a special kind of a museum on the 37th floor. And we also try to work with other cultural authorities, trying to make sure we can supply power or electricity 24-7. And some of the collaborative effort is underway. So we hope that this will no, not only become a architectural or building space, but it can also become a cultural landmark. All right, that's my very brief introduction. And tomorrow afternoon, we're going to organize a visit to the site of the construction of Shanghai Tower. And by then, we're going to have more interactions. And I also welcome you. And I hope that in the near future, please drop in on our Shanghai Tower site from time to time. And uh, on November 29th, 2008, the construction formally started. By December 31st, 2014, the kind of uh, civil works uh, of engineering was basically wrapped up. And uh, then by 2015, the operations will be formally launched. So actually, no matter whether it is under construction or it is in operation in the future, you're always welcome to visit it. You know, we also hope that CTBUH can be doing business inside Shanghai Tower. Thank you very much.